I'm CB, and this is NBS Welding. Welcome to the Super Service Truck. We're rolling into uh, rolling into town, going to see my buddy. Got a call from my buddy. Uh, if you follow the channel, you know we've done a lot of stuff for the local car wash. My buddy's has got a uh, car wash in town, and we're going to be doing some aluminum fabrication for him now. And uh, all I know about it so far is he's got... Uh, a larger tank that he wants installed on an assembly where uh, the tank the current plastic tanks too small uh, and this larger tank is going to be sitting on top of a aluminum frame that's existing but uh, something's got to be made to hold the tank and support the weight of it it'll hold a hundred gallons of water so we're talking about at least 800 pounds uh, so we're going to need uh, going to need to fabricate something that will support the weight of that tank. And uh, that's what's up. Come along for the ride. So here's this tank that's way too small. Uh, it's on this pump assembly. It's uh, part of the car wash. And here's the tank that we want on there. Wanting to set that tank up on top of this uh this aluminum frame that this entire system is connected to. So we're going to have to build something that will hold that out of aluminum. Uh, got the shop set up, the fab aluminum. Got the brakes set up. I put the blanket on the steel table. And I've cleaned up a sheet of uh, 11 gauge aluminum. Get started cutting some parts uh, with a plasma cutter. Need a plate here that'll hold about 800 pounds. So we're going to have to put some bracing strategically uh, where we can. I have a lot of people ask me why I don't saw the aluminum. I find the plasma faster and uh, it it I use that file to cut the dross off and it, it really does a nice job. When I saw aluminum, those chips are just everywhere. And, uh, you still have to deburr. So I don't, you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm at this point still preferring the plasma, but, uh, here we're kind of showing how I cheat with the brake. Uh, I got a cheap ass brake and I'm using the hoist like it's, uh, you know, allows me, allows me to act like I got a hydraulic brake for a whole lot less money. I've uh, got to notch some of these bends, so I get me a couple marks made, and it's time to cringe because I'm I'm getting out the uh, the aluminum cutting wheel of death here. Uh, if you follow the channel and see me working aluminum, you'll see me with this. Uh, this is a uh, tungsten carbide tooth saw blade on a uh, low RPM polisher. Uh, and I use it to cut aluminum. This is, uh, not a, not the high speed grinder, uh, spinning, you know, like, uh, like it looks it, 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 I think maximum, maximum speed on this thing's, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's nowhere near what a grinder turns, but this tungsten carbide tooth wheel I use to cut aluminum, notch aluminum a lot. And it is, uh, it's dangerous. Uh, I'm lucky I ain't lost a digit with it yet. And then I, my, my old standby sander, you know, the four and a half inch backer pad with a five inch sanding pad. And remember on aluminum, uh, use the beeswax. Run the beeswax on your sanding pad. It keeps that aluminum from galling up your sanding pads. Um, I want to get another bend in this in this plate. This one won't be 90 degrees. I was wondering if this was going to work. Uh, it's a little, little bit tricky. Uh, it almost messed up my other bends because, uh, you know, it, the, my other, my other legs that I had bent are right against the brake when I did this, but it worked and it really straightened out the back of this plate. Um, so I was, I was happy that I could get that bend in the back right there. Let me stiffen that up and, uh. 
straighten it out. Now, going on to fabricate some bracing, and uh, I'm coming back out with the stainless steel straight edge. Uh, when I have plasma aluminum, I almost always use this old uh, stainless steel straight edge. And I, uh, I let my plasma tip lay right on the material. And one of the, one of the important tricks to keep your tips lasting if you do this is you need to point it a little bit away from you, not towards you, away from you. So, uh, you, you know, you're, you're pointing the flame sort of, uh, not straight down into the metal, but kind of dragging it and angling it back. You, and I hope you can see here I've, how I've got it angled black uh, angled back a little you see how my hand is a little closer to the material that makes uh as i'm dragging that that just makes a little bit of a gap between the material and the plasma flame got a couple small parts uh that i'm going to be using on the end of that thing i was able to bend both of those at once and then for this bracing i'm making a couple of channels uh, and what it's going to do when it's all welded up, it's going to have the effect of, uh, like two rectangular tubes underneath here. And of course, these bends I've got in the end are, uh, going to stiffen it up quite a bit, uh, tapping things around, tightening things up, tapping and tacking, getting things squeezed together, um, I I have to put the blanket on my steel table because the steel scratches the uh, aluminum really bad. But when you weld, you got to make sure you're not welding right over that blanket. Because, uh, you know, when you melt that, then it sticks to the aluminum and you got a mess to clean up. I have a jack stand on the floor next to me there and I've pull, I'm pulling that thing towards me. So I'm using that jack stand to uh, get these welded areas away from the blanket. But I also use it to uh, squish this thing together. I put the jack stand right, you know, in the middle and push down or whatever. Any of the areas where I need to push it together. I can work on the positioning of the jack stand and how I press it down to get it to work. Use that Millermatic 252 with the spool gun. And this would be a, uh, this is an 035 aluminum MIG wire. Actually, I, um, this is, uh, I'm using Lincoln wire, a Lincoln MIG uh, aluminum wire. It's called Super Glide. And uh, I've had good luck with it. It's good wire. Get a decent price on that at my steel supplier. Can't mess around with that aluminum MIG. Once that thing lights up, you just got to go. You can't puddle and wiggle around like you can with steel and manipulate it. Uh, especially on this 1 8th. When that thing lights and starts fusing together, you got to go. That aluminum dissipates the heat so quickly. So here we are back at the car wash. We're going to test fit this thing and and see what we got there's uh you know the one area where i don't have bracing on the plate is going to be the area where that one two by two rectangle or two by two aluminum square tube goes through and that's where uh that's an area where that tube is going to help support help support this thing and help support that tank a lot glad to see it fits and the notches worked out good next thing is i'm wondering if it's got the strength that it needs i just wanted to get up there myself and of course i don't weigh anywhere near as much as that tank would weigh but that the weight of that tank is going to be a lot more spread out than the, the you know the way i'm putting my weight real tight together in one spot and jumping up and down in the center of that, I'm pretty much convinced that uh, we're in good shape strength-wise on this. Uh, I feel good about it. I, I, I don't think there's going to be any issue at all. Uh, I think it's plenty strong for what it's going to do here. 
There's one little warpy spot uh, where it looks like it's bowing up right there. I think when they put that, when we get that tank on there and put 800 pounds of water in it, I think it'll take care of that. So here's a shot of it with the tank in place. So that's what it's going to look like. I don't, we don't have any water in the tank yet, but that's what she's going to look like. Uh, my buddy Tim's got a lot of plumbing to do to, to get this hooked up, to get this to the point where he can use it. Uh, we got really bad weather right now, so it's a good time to mess with it because there's not a lot of people going through the car wash. I got to give it a thumbs up. I'm liking it. While I was all set up to fabricate aluminum, there's an idea that something I didn't been needing for myself. Uh, this is some of my stuff I take to the gym. I have a water bottle, gallon a gallon to drink, and and my uh, my demus hooks that go on my wrists. Uh, and before I know it, I'm cutting out weird shapes and and bending funny looking pieces of metal and trying to uh, trying to come up with something uh, to solve a problem that I have at the gym. Now I track my workouts with my phone. And I always got that gallon jug with me that I'm drinking on. Uh, we normally have a cleaning solution spray bottle that we carry around the gym and, and a rag. And uh, I, I'm always like looking for a place to set my phone down. I'm always, you know, setting my, my gallon jug drink down on the floor. And uh, I think I just needed a gym dolly. I needed somewhere to put this stuff. And I needed a stand that I could set my phone on. And, uh, you know, like this is, this thing was born. Uh, this is all 11 gauge aluminum. Uh, bent this thing out in the break. And, uh, I didn't use a spool gun on this. I actually TIG welded this, uh, with my favorite AC TIG welder, the Arc Captain TIG 200P. So, uh, I, uh, I just wanted to, I guess I decided I'd show you this. Uh, there's my, my moose hooks, my cleaning solution. You know, we sanitize the stuff at the gym, uh, the, the wipe rags, and then my drink. It all fits in this caddy, and then I put the phone there on top. And um, like I say, I, th having a little phone stand, it, you know, you can set it this way uh and carry it around but using it like this is the way i would do it normally because uh i track my workouts real close you know like this is a here obviously there's a pull day workout where i've got my delt flies hammer curls hex bar shrug t-bar row uh and i keep track of how much i lifted and how many reps i did you know and 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 i always have that and actually not long ago in the gym I uh, set my phone down, took me a while to find it, and it made me mad. So with this dolly, I can walk around with it. Um, here, me and my buddy KO's in the gym. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. We're making it happen. Uh, I'm going to do some shrugs. I got my moose hooks handy. Uh, got the D-moose hooks handy right there in my dolly. So I uh, do some hex bar shrugs. Uh, and I'll just stand in the hex bar during my 30 second arrest and I'll record in my phone. I, I got my phone on the stand right there. I can get me a drink. Um, everything's, you know, everything's handy. Everything's handy right there in my gym dolly. Uh, 